Hi, YouTube. So today is October, Tuesday, the 16th. And right now, YouTube is not working. So I may or may not upload this video tonight. But in case you don't know, the uh, owner of uh, the Bunny Ranch died yesterday, or was it this morning? Anyway, it was after a night of uh, partying. He was celebrating apparently his uh, 72nd birthday. And well, in, um, in sex worker uh, reality, when, when you use the word partying, it, it doesn't mean, um, you know, like drinking alcohol or, or something like that. It would usually what party means is like hard drugs. Like maybe he was doing lines of Coke, I imagine. And, and um, I mean, people die all the time from doing Coke and people, young people in their twenties die from doing Coke. So no, he's no exception. And plus he was like, um, well, no, I, I'm not saying like, this is a fact. I'm just saying, I imagine that's what happened because they had, they're not saying right now what happened, but I imagine that is what happened. And, and being that he was um, not in good health anyway, not, he was, he did not eat healthy food. Um, in case you didn't know, brothels aren't known for their healthy food. They usually just buy the cheapest food out there and, you know, to serve up and it's just garbage basically. So yeah, he was out of shape. I'm sure he didn't exercise or anything like that. He was really like, had like a beer belly and just gross. And um, yeah, so I wonder, will sex work now be decriminalized now that he's gone? I mean, he did have a lot of influence and he did um, speak a lot of shit and he would say stuff like, it's dirty, it's nasty, it's disease ridden, and it's only safe if you come work for me. In other words, he was saying that the only, the only way sex work would be safe and clean is if you went and worked for him, um, meaning when it's legalized, but that's bullshit. You don't, women don't need a pimp. Women don't need a brothel to stay safe. They don't need to give up more than half their earnings to stay disease free. You know, it's called being careful and using condoms and you can do all that without a brothel or without a pimp. So he's not needed. And actually I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe finally now we'll have a chance. I mean, not, I'm not saying there's not other brothel owners, but he was the most outspoken politically involved one. And yeah, um, he had way too much influence and I don't know. I don't know. Like why, why did he, why was he the one? Why, why is he allowed to own so many brothels? And there's a lot of questions about that. Like, are these people like well connected in the mafia and organized crime? I wouldn't doubt it. They would, I know not long ago when I used to work there, they would pay off sheriffs and, and make bribe money and give bribe money to people to get their way about all kinds of stuff polit politically and everything else and the way the law works. And so I don't see why it should have changed. Nothing's changed since I worked there, what, 15, 20 years ago. I worked there long before there was ever a bunny ranch. So I worked there back when the love ranch was called something completely different and, and ran by someone completely, you know, from some other, probably from some other organized crime family. And it was called the Cherry Patch. And I know for sure he was with organized crime without a doubt. They actually finally did get him on bribery, but that's after he did all kinds of stuff. So I was a victim of the stuff he, he did. Um, I, I know Dennis Hoff has many, he had many um, allegations of, um, you know, sexual misconduct and, and everything else. And he actually, Right now, he actually had someone suing him or taking him to court about something like that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it still goes on. They have too much power and influence and they have too much say and to like either make you or break you. Basically, um, you know, you, you can work there and you can make millions or they can just like fire you, fire you for no reason one day or or something else just to get rid of you because maybe, you know, you don't you're not doing what exactly what they want. You know, maybe if someone, if he wants sexual favors, then you really don't have much options. You pretty much, you know, would have to 
do whatever because otherwise it, you're a dime a dozen and there's like a thousand girls a month you know applying for that one you know in that one brothel where they only maybe have like 10 15 positions for people to work there and you got like every month thousands of girls that want to work there so yeah it's very monopolized and very organized crime type stuff and you know sex workers we don't just like you we don't want our lives to be re heavy regulated or criminalized just like nobody else would want their sex lives to be heavily regulated or criminalized you know we're just like anybody else we want our freedoms we want to be decriminalized we want to be able to have our sex lives the way we want and without anyone watching over us and telling us what we have to do and how much money we have to pay or where we can or can't can't you know work out of our own homes or whatever that's bullshit the set to me sex work is more than work it's my sex life and so it's i find it very um it, it it's like how would you feel i mean i know people have tr trouble with trying with putting themselves in someone else's place i know that because it's so obvious for me it's so obvious that it's like what if you out there anyone out there that that just like a normal civilian person dating what if the government came in and criminalized you and said you can't work you know or you can't you can't have a boyfriend in your own home i mean it basically it's the same thing but just because i get a little bit of money here and there i mean it's not it's not like that it's not like i have a line of guys out my door you know now that that would be like okay i can understand yeah okay you regularize though you would regu regulate those types of places sure if you have co continuous people coming and going okay i can understand that but when you go to an individual and you tell them you know and maybe they only see one person a week or a few people a month i mean you can't regulate so much that you tell someone they can't work for themselves out of their own place that's bullshit it will never work people will just do it anyway that's why we need decriminalization without decriminalization we're screwed because we're always going to be criminalized one way or the other so that's my rant for the day take care